Okay, take two. <laughs> I know I said take two. Because I literally just spent an entire match talking to myself, thinking that I was recording, and guess what? I wasn't recording. So now I am. Anyways, I am here to talk about the update. And my thoughts on it. So, you may be wondering, oh, you're probably talking about the arty changes. Why are you playing Cold War? That's why I'm playing Cold War right now. Uh, but anyways, yes, my thoughts on the Artillery 2.0. Nerf to alpha damage? Good. That's fine. Totally fine. Uh, definitely need some tweaks, because some outliers like the, uh, the lower tier FE-304, FE-305, uh, they kind of, they kind of suck, but, uh, overall, alpha nerf? Good. Uh, rate of fire buff? No. Absolutely not. They did not need those at all. And whoever thought that it was a good idea to buff the rate of fire on the artillery, please stop. They are absolutely obnoxious with their rate of fire. The nerf to the bat chat artillery? Good. The 10 second interclip? Good. It needed that nerf. Giving it a six-shot autoloader? No, not super okay with that. But whatever. The alpha nerf was enough to make that less annoying. But in its place now, the uh, T92 fires faster than the fucking 60 PP, which is absurd of me to think that a fucking artillery piece, which can hit you from across the map without, you know, ever needing to see you directly, is uh, capable of firing faster than a heavy tank. I think that is genuinely stupid. And either, you know, you need to buff these tanks that are definitely falling behind, or you need to just stop trying to give artillery DPM. Artillery should not be DPM machines. They sit in the back of the map, basically impervious to everything except other artillery, and now they have more health as well? They didn't need that? Unless you're gonna make them direct fire and get rid of their overhead view. They don't need more health. Stop that. That's not okay. Like, you've basically made the job of a light tank much harder. Which, like, I'll admit, light tanks YOLO rushing to kill the artillery. Is it annoying for the people playing artillery? Yes. But if artillery literally warrants people YOLO rushing into the enemy spawn, killing the artillery, and dying because of it, then artillery's probably a problem. The way that artillery exists in this game, before the update, was a problem. Because literally think of the way that artillery plays. You play a point and click adventure. You sit in the back of the map and you were basically deleting people from all of their health. But it's a slot machine. So you're not guaranteed to one-shot people for all of their health. It's just, oh yeah, if the stars align, you can do that. That's the problem most people had with artillery. It sits in the back of the map, it doesn't have to see you directly, and it was like playing a giant slot machine to see if you one-shot someone. Now? There's less RNG, which, like, cool. It's more consistent. That's awesome. But, uh... You didn't need to give it more rate of fire or health on top of all of those other buffs. Like, the compensation buffs are a little too hard for, uh... The nerfs. Because, like, you only took 40% of their, uh, damage. 
Like, okay, that only really affects the splash effectiveness. Not the direct effectiveness of the guns. So direct hits are still really strong. And since you've made them more accurate and less susceptible to RNG... You know, uh, the AP and heat shells on certain artillery pieces are viable now. So, yeah, they did not need the DPM buff to compensate. Especially the 5355, which I think has been an outlier in artillery from the very beginning, because like, it had such a big gun. And it had such a good rate of fire. And it had a turret. And it had speed. Like, overall, it's just a good platform. And you're telling me that your idea was to just make it better. Like, okay. Why would you do such a thing? That seems like really unnecessary. My god, my whole team is like crumpling around me. But yeah, no. So, that's kind of where I stand on it right now. Initial impressions. Alpha nerf, good. Rate of fire, HP. And like all the other miscellaneous buffs to compensate for it completely unnecessary. How did I just bounce off of a fucking M50? I am 50. You're really panicking, aren't you, M50? I mean, my teammates are all dying around me, so I'm probably gonna be the last one left, but... We're probably gonna lose this game, but you know what? That's fine. <sighs> Back to uh, my tangent. Not a uh, not a fan of the RE changes overall. That's, that's where I stand on it. Not a fan. Like, if you're gonna leave the rate of fire, then you need to take away the HP. Like, pick one or the one or the other. And if you want to stick with the HP, get rid of top-down mode. Give them adequate HP to tank destroyers of the same tier. Just make them direct fire. Give them better accuracy. Give them, like, an AP round standard. AP and or a heat shell standard and call it a day. Make them like the fucking Sturm line. Give them... That's it. That's all I gotta say about those. It's like, give some of them better armor if you make them TDs. Something like that. But, as it currently stands, them being able to sit at the back of the map and only really having to worry about teams YOLO rushing and or just other artillery shooting at them. I don't think it's a good change. So overall, not super thrilled with it. Does it make RD unable to one-shot things? Uh, the same tier with armor, maybe. But they're still gonna one-shot tier 8s, which is annoying because tier 8 matchmaking is awful. Constantly get put in tier 10s. Like, just, I don't know. The other thing that I have an issue with, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back over here and talk about, is actually the season pass. Because I have a problem with the XP in the season pass.
primarily for the reason that I have a problem with a lot of battle passes and season passes and games. Eh, this right here. 4,500 XP for one point. Aside from these weekly ones, which only give five, aside from the top one there, which only gives four for some reason. I hope that's a visual bug. See, I had a problem with this last season where these weekly ones only gave five when they used to give seven. Because the amount of time investment it takes to get a lot of these done, I think deserves more than just five measly points. Albeit, yes, five points grants you one level on the season pass. But now that you've upped the XP per point to 4,500, the easiest way to do this is to have multiple tanks with times twos and have premium time. Otherwise, it's probably going to take you a bit more because, let's face it, an average game in World of Tanks, win or lose, you're probably, well, win in this case, because losing you don't get as much XP, but winning an average game is probably like somewhere between five to 800 XP, somewhere in that range. Yeah, it's, it's sinking in, isn't it, how many games it takes just to earn one point. Because that's, like, winning, you're probably going to get, like, a thou an upwards of a thousand XP, somewhere thereabouts, especially if you have your double, and you'll be fine. But, that's 4,500 XP for one point. And, for all the time investment for the weekly ones, only getting a level for each one of these when there's a hundred levels. That's a lot of time investment. And I don't know if you thought about this, but, like, I know a large portion of the player base is probably, you know, home majority of the time there. Or have significant amounts of time to play the game. But think of this from the perspective of an average player. Someone, like, an average person that enjoys games in their free time, they probably work a 9 to 5. And so, due to that, you're probably only going to have like 2 to 3 hours to dedicate to one game every night. The way this is set up, you have to basically dedicate all that time throughout the week to this one game and nothing else. Unless you have the entire day to do other things. Like, okay. This is, it's getting more and more grindy, which I'm not super a fan of, because as I mentioned with other games, I'm not really a fan of season pass things that make you grind super hard to get them done. Looking at Overwatch 2's from last season, I haven't checked out the new one yet, but I'll probably take a look at that in the near future and see what I think about it. And it's also why I bring up Destinies, because throughout the course of that season pass, you unlock things that make progressing through the season pass easier. Because at certain intervals, they give you more XP. They give you boosts to XP, boost to currency, boost to other things like that, during your grind through the season pass. That, I think, is a very solid setup for a season pass. Because once you get to a certain point in it, it makes it easier to complete it. Whereas with something like this, you basically just do the weeklies and then outside of that, yeah, you're going to have some slow progress. Mm -hmm. Which, I get it. It promotes the ultimate season pass. I get that. I get you want to make your money. But like... Railroad people into it. Make it worthwhile. Don't make it like don't make it worthwhile because it's a grind fest. Make it worthwhile because the rewards are worth it. Okay? I 
I cannot stress this enough, how important it is to make the season pass worthwhile and, like, obtainable to the average player. Because you're not enticing new players to come in and play if they have to literally work their asses off to get things. And I'll say this again about the fucking linear vehicle progression system. I hate the linear vehicle progression system. Because you have to put in MMO hours to unlock different parts of these tanks. I liked the old tech tree system. Which PC uses. Where you can pick and choose what parts. You build up enough XP for a part, you can skip other ones and just go straight to the one you want. Do you think that that costs more XP than this linear vehicle progression system? No. No, it doesn't. Because with that one, you only research the parts you need. So you're only spending the XP for that specific part. You can jump straight to a fully upgraded tank. With the parts that you want on it. So you can play a tank the way you want to play it. And that's perfectly fine. The other thing that I have an issue with, which is more of a, a small issue, is how long have we been told they've been working on, like, a World War II hub? HUD? And when's the last time we heard about it? See, I'm in the nitpicking stuff now for the game. It's been a while, hasn't it? They haven't talked about that in a hot minute. i play the T-54 again and hopefully get a win. But yeah, what, what happened to the World War II HUD? Huh? What happened to that? More quality of life stuff would also be pretty great. Be pretty good. Like another thing that I have nitpicking issues with is the consumables. Why don't you make the standard consumables on a cooldown, like the premium ones? Just make them a longer cooldown. Since you don't want to go through and make people use the radial wheel to choose individual, you know, crew members, just make it like, I don't know, 30 seconds longer than the premium? I think that would be a good balance. Then people could go back to using the standard equipment instead of having to use, like, full-on premium... Well, not equipment. Uh, full-on premium consumables. Instead of using the standard consumables. Because, like, you have so many people that will complain about not being able to make credits. Because, like, let's face it, if you're not using the premium consumables, you're basically playing at a disadvantage. Like, I'm not going to play at a disadvantage, and it's kind of been miserable going through and having to go through all of the different menus, which is another nitpick of mine, how many fucking menu jumps you have to do just to get to different fucking parts of the, like, for instance, reassigning fucking commanders is miserable. I should not have sat there like that, that is on me. Like, literally. It should not take that many button presses to get to a fucking commander that I want to put in a tank. Which leads me to the fucking filter issue, and like, if I keep nitpicking, I'm gonna be here for a fucking hour. So, I'll make another video on that at some point. Go through the various nitpicks with the game. Because like, if I don't stop now, I'm gonna ramble on about that for like, hours. Long story short, I care a lot about World of Tanks, because I've been playing the game for, like, over a... I, in total, I've been playing World of Tanks for 11 years, going on 12. So, like... I'm not a fan of the direction that console has been going in. Because, like... They can do better. Like... It wouldn't take a whole lot to get this game into a much better state. The problem is, do they have the funding 
and the drive to commit to making the game better. Because as it stands currently, I don't think they have the drive to make the game better. I'm gonna die here. Yep. But like... I, do I think the game could be brought back? Yeah, I do think the game could be brought back. But there's a lot of things that ne would need to change. And it needs to start with quality of life instead of cranking out new premium tanks. I say I use the term new lightly. Because they're basically just reskins at this point. Aside from like the 780 and the Astron Rex in this one. Like, yeah, cool, new premium tanks, but uh Yeah, what about the what about the play experience? And they talk like I hear a lot of talk about like, oh, the these were terrible additions of the game because they're bad for new players, like the tier six like tier five and six premiums. Mm, no, those those premiums were not what pushes new players away from the game. It's that the new player experience in general is not there. People who are like fresh to World of Tanks, they have no source of information on how to improve and how to make their experience playing the game better. There is no feedback loop for this game, other than, oh, I have driven out in front of an entire team and I am now dead. Or, oh, I have made one mistake and I have lost all of my health. That doesn't teach you anything. It doesn't teach you what the mistake is. It doesn't teach you how to avoid the mistake. It's just like, oh, I've gone over here and I've now died. Oh, okay. Which is the issue that I have with all of the, like, thousand alpha TDs. Because, like, the ease of use of, like, the thousand alpha TDs and stuff, like, yeah. It's there. They just point and click at most things, basically. You're just looking at you, uh, E4, primarily. Sleek. I don't know. There's just a lot of quality of life changes, and I should probably just make a separate video on that. Anyways, let me sum this up for RE 2.0. Alpha, alpha nerf good, rate of fire buff not good, HP buff not good. Yeah. That's basically all I have to say on it. Overall, it was more of a buff than a nerf. Uh, anyone complaining that, oh, they've ruined Artie, just play it. If you think they've ruined it, play it like a TD. Convince them to just change all artillery into tank destroyers, then. Make them like the fucking Sturmline. Because I don't think any class in this game should be able to sit in the back of the map with, like, complete impunity, except to other artillery. I don't think that is a fun mechanic, and I don't think it's a fair mechanic. It's just annoying. And now they have a higher rate of fire. So yeah, they're not one-shotting you anymore, but they're still going to hit you. And honestly, after the changes, they're going to hit you a lot more often. Which makes playing very slow tanks... Absolute hell. Playing a like an unupgraded tank? Fucking miserable if artillery focuses in on you. Because uh standard RE procedure, if you see a tank spotted first, you're gonna focus on it, and you're gonna focus on it until it is dead. Which is more so annoying because a lot of the fucking artillery now can fire faster. Well, can fire as fast, if not faster, than heavy tanks. Which is annoying. It's really annoying. 
anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Probably make another video on general quality of life issues if you want. Uh, please leave comments below if you have any. And I'll also put this out here if you watch to this point. Thank you. But also, if you have any tanks you would like to see me do reviews on, talk about anything about the game in particular you'd want to hear, like questions, leave those in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I'd take a look at all of them when I get them. Anyways, thank you all. I'll see you next time. Bye!